Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Shinrin Yoku, and Lert Yurt Life, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Saturday, December 30th, 7.45 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. Seismic tremor on Grindavik has been steadily increasing over the last 36 hours. With uplift, an eruption may be imminent in the next 24 hours. Keep calm. It's boom time. Huge waves to hit California coast for a third day, bringing flooding and life-threatening conditions, as well as surfers. The bad news is evacuation warnings were issued in Ventura as powerful surf and dangerous rip currents hit Southern California beaches. Here's the full forecast. Dangerous coastal conditions linger for the West Coast. Snow showers for the Great Lakes region and the Appalachians. For this last weekend of 2023, coastal effects and impacts for the West Coast continue through Saturday with slow improvements expected into Monday. Meanwhile, snow showers and a few squalls are expected across the Great Lakes region, Ohio Valley, and Central Appalachians as a trough of low pressure slides through into Monday. Otherwise, the remainder of the country remains tranquil and seasonable. And the snowfall for... January is looking epic. Now, albeit these are, models are far out, but let's walk it through for you. Here is that small clipper that's going to be moving down the plains there and into the east, bringing some moderately heavy snow through January 2nd to West Virginia, as well as Michigan, Wisconsin, upstate PA, and western New York. Take a look at that. By this time, by the 3rd, a system will be moving into the west to bring some heavy snow to the Sierras, northern California as it moves east. Snow is going to be falling in Nevada and then the entire Four Corners region by the 4th and the 5th, bringing much-needed moisture to the west as all basins are well below average. The good news is the models are showing storm after storm, bringing a reprieve to that, well, snow blight that we've been experiencing. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. He's very upset about the January forecast. Have you heard Arctic sea ice extent as of today is the highest in 20 years? Yes, climate scam. Indeed. Hashtag. And we're keeping a close eye over here on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Seismic activity has dropped off, which usually happens before an eruption. And tremor is increasing now above 4,500, which was the same level that the last Fisher eruption occurred about two weeks ago. All of the data is pointing to an eruption happening in the next 24 hours or so. And our prayers are going out to those in Grindavik who have been allowed to move back to their homes. Now, the good news is plans of building a lava structure north of Grindavik to prevent lava from affecting the town will go into effect as soon as possible. Stay tuned for updates as we keep a close eye on Iceland. Seismic update, one big rumbler today, 6.3 in Indonesia, no tsunami alert. Strange earthquake up here in Canada, 3.2 Notre Dame du Mont Carmel, wherever that is. A couple of rockers uh, uh, in Southern California here, Cyril's Valley, it's actually Central Cali, and Bodfish, both with 3.5s. There also has been an uptick at Kilauea, increased seismic activity and unrest at the Southwest Rift Zone. Let's take a look at what they say. Elevated seismic activity started in the south of the volcano summit yesterday about 1 p.m. local time and is still continuing at the time of this update. Instruments detected a significant spike of ground uplift on the sand hill at 12.30 p.m. And most of the earthquakes have been occurring about 2 to 4 kilometers to the south of the Halamea Moa crater. At depths between 1 and 3, all indicative of magma movement and the fact that this Baby, take a look at that uptick. Maybe about to erupt one more time, as it so often does. Ducono is experiencing some volcanic eruptions, and those are continuing. Fuego to 16,000 foot today. Reventador to 15,000. Kluchyskov also puffing. Semeru to 15,000. Kluchyskov, an estimated 20,000 foot puff. And that is all of the news. As we head over to space weather, the sun is embarrassingly blank. We are supposed to be at solar max, and it is, in fact, solar minimum sun. One sunspot over here to the right, and a few pinpricks in the middle. Good news is that the coronal hole has now passed us by, 
And the Enhanced Seismic watch is coming to an end. No large magnitude earthquakes, which is good news, as it appears the coronal hole has now become transequatorial and has gotten a little thinner and less progressive. Now, what that means is the solar wind will be less. And in fact, the three-day geomagnetic forecast isn't showing anything spectacular from this solar wind stream. In fact, I can't even click on it. Let's try that one more time. Detailed forecast. Nope, that's not what we're looking for. Well, the th three-day geomagnetic forecast, nonetheless, is barely getting above KP4 from the plasma stream coming from this coronal hole. So that's not even low-level G1 geomagnetic storm. Moving on to science news, NASA outlines a plan to deploy burrowing cryobots on the icy moons of Saturn and Jupiter. Why they haven't done this before is anyone's guess. It is going to be the moon Io that produces the first example of life beyond Earth, in my opinion. But NASA nonetheless has laid out the roadmap for major aspects that need to be addressed while developing a robotic system that can explore icy moons with watery oceans. And it's just a fantastic concept, and we need to go out there and do more research in the deep oceans as well as these watery moons, in my opinion. Now, suppress science. Scientists destroy 99% of cancer cells in the lab using vibrating molecules. No, not chemotherapy, not poison. Vibrating molecules, completely safe too. Scientists have discovered a new way to destroy cancer cells, stimulating amniocyanae molecules with near-infrared light, causing them to vibrate and sink. It's enough to break apart the membranes of cancer cells. Now, these types of molecules are already used in bioimaging as synthetic dyes, commonly used in low doses to detect cancer, and they stay stable in water and are very good at attaching themselves to the outside of cells. So there may be a breakthrough in cancer technology, and we may be all alive a little bit longer. Now, if you're planning a trip for April 2024 total solar eclipse, it will be one for the record books. On April 8th, 2024, the U.S. will experience its second total solar eclipse in seven years, but only parts of 15 U.S. states will experience totality, and they are getting booked quick. Here is the path of totality starting at 1.20 p.m. and progressing 3.20 p.m. Eastern time. So the totality will be in this path at many different times across the U.S. The closest location to the Four Corners for us is going to be somewhere here in central Texas, maybe south central Texas. It is a 12 or 13 hour drive, 14 hour drive. We haven't committed to going, but if we don't all go, some of us will go to definitely witness this event. It will be monumentous in my opinion. Now, will there be something going on in early April to prevent you from seeing the event? It's anyone's guess because 2024 is lining up to be a doozy. Remember, April 8th, 2024, the U.S. will experience its second total solar eclipse, so go get it, especially if you live near this stripe. Now, an interesting topic is sun-diving comets. The question is, do these sun-diving comets like the one here in 2011, October, cause coronal mass ejections? like the one we're seeing here. And in fact, if they do, could this be an explanation for the unexplained Miyake events or the largest solar storms on Earth? Around 10 of them have been recorded just in the Holocene. Join us in just a few minutes. Do sun-diving comets trigger CMEs? Miyake events could be cometary encounters, and we are overdue over at Magnetic Reversal News, and that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. Become a Patreon, support the work we do, and watch all of our podcasts in one place, commercial free. And join us in just a moment over at Magnetic Reversal News for a wonderful scientific expose by Lee and I on the topic of Miyake events and sun diving comets. We love each and every one of you. Hit the thumbs up. It helps with the Al Gore rhythm. Be safe. And that is a boom. Mm -hmm.